Today I'm going to show you how to create this metal plate texture. This texture is going to use an old metal texture tutorial that I created a while back. So if you want this exact texture, you'll need to follow part of that tutorial as well, but I'll link it in the description. Thanks very much to my patrons. If you like what I do, you can support me on Gumroad or Patreon. I've got all my tutorial blend files on Patreon, as well as some blend files of projects I've created over the years. I also made this little warehouse scene to showcase this metal plate material, and I'll put that on my Patreon as well. I'm going to get rid of this cube and hit Shift A and bring in a plane instead. I'm going to go to the Cycles Render Engine and go to Experimental Feature Set uh, for the Adaptive Subdivision option in the Subdivision Surface Modifier. And I'm also going to switch to GPU Compute, but if you don't have that option, don't worry about it. It's just a little faster for me to go GPU Compute. I'm also going to set my Noise Threshold to 0.1 to get my renders a little bit faster without sacrificing too much quality. I'm going to split my screen and just change the left side to the shader editor. And let's put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. And then hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right. While hovering over this 3D viewport as well, I'm just going to hold down Z and move my mouse up. And I'll go into rendered mode. I'm also going to quickly set up an HDRI. So I'm going to go to the world properties here. And next to color where it's got this yellow circle, just go ahead click that and go to environment texture. And go to open and navigate to where you got some HDRIs. I've got some free ones I downloaded from uh, Polyhaven or HDRIHaven.com. And I'm just going to use an interior one, Kaylee Interior 1K. So I'm going to click that in, then go to Ray Visibility and unclick Camera. So it continues to light my object, but it's not visible in the background. So after looking at some reference images, I decided that I could kind of do like a flattened circle kind of thing. So that seemed to work out. I'm going to go Shift A and hit TC and hit Enter, and you'll get a texture corner node. And eventually I'm going to come out of UV, but for now I'm just going to come out of objects so you can see the shape a little bit better. And the way I got that preview going uh, automatically like this here is uh, by holding down Control Shift and left clicking on this node. And that's a Node Wrangler shortcut, so if it's not working, you just need to go to Edit Preferences uh, under Add-ons. Just start typing in up here, Node Wrangler, and you should see it here. And just make sure there's a check mark right there. So I'm going to hit Control Shift left click to get back to object there. And then bring in a separate XYZ node and just place it right there. I'm going to bring in a math node, place it here, open this up and hit P and it'll switch to power. I'm going to uh, change that to 2 and just duplicate this guy here with Shift E and plug Y into the bottom one. Make sure you're plugging into the base and not the exponent. I'm going to duplicate this, open it up and hit A and then drag this in so we're adding them together. And there I've got a circle. I could do a square root one at the end as well, but uh, whatever. This seems to work just fine. Now I'm going to flatten it, so I'm going to duplicate this add, put it here, and change it uh, by opening that up and hitting M to multiply. And we're going to change this top one to, um, let's do like 2.4 or 2.5, something like that. And I'm going to duplicate that, put it on the bottom here, and change this bottom value to something like 0.72 or 0.75. Uh, I'll just go 0.72 for now, so I had originally. And I'm going to add a color ramp on the end so we can kind of see what this looks like a little bit better just by bringing the black in and the white uh, way down. Next, I'd like to rotate this by 45 degrees. So I could either bring in a mapping node or maybe a vector rotate node. I'll just do that and I'll place it right here before the separate X, Y, Z. I'll just change this angle at the bottom to 45 degrees. Next, I'd like to get this pattern to repeat for me. So I'm gonna bring in three vector math nodes here and I'll just add them all in at once. And then the first one I'm going to change to scale, which is at the bottom there. I'm just going to zoom out. Scale. And the second one I'm going to change to fraction. And the third one I'm going to change to subtract. And change all of these to 0.5. So it places the shape in the middle of each of these quadrants here. I can then change the scale and I get an infinite repeating pattern that I can make as big or small as I want. Let's just change this to 12 for now. Next I'd like to get half of these angled the other way. so. I'm going to get rid of that principled BSDF for now. I don't really need it. And I'm going to hit Control Shift D while highlighting all of these nodes here, except for the texture coordinate and the material output. So that remains attached to that uh, object output of the texture coordinate. And then let's go ahead and just add in a multiply math node at the end here to kind of see what's going on a little bit better. Make sure that's coming out of uh, color and not alpha. And then I'm going to change this bottom vector rotate to negative 45 instead of positive 45. I'm going to duplicate this scale at the beginning here and place it right after the vector rotate on the top and change it to 3. 
and then just duplicate that and put it on the bottom as well. We're just going to make those uh, shapes quite a bit smaller. To offset these two shapes, I'm going to bring in another vector math node and just place it right after the scale on the top here. And I'm just going to change this to 0.5. I want to be able to adjust these scales here, but I also want them to be synced up. So I'm going to bring in a value node and just set this to 12. And I'll plug this into the scale up here and down here. And now I can adjust this and it'll shrink and enlarge the pattern seamlessly there. Let's do the same thing with this scale down here as well. So this guy is set to three. Let's go ahead and punch that in and I'll plug it into the, the bottom there and then the top. And then we can adjust this as well, which is just the general size of these uh, shapes here. We could also do the same thing for any number of nodes down here because these all need to be synced up or, you know, they probably should anyways. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing that, but if you want some extra settings, it'd be a good idea to set that up as well. I'm going to try displacing this here. So first of all, let's bring in an invert node here so we can have the white coming up through the black there. And then I'm going to bring in a displacement node, place it right here, and let's go into the height instead of the uh, whatever it was plugged in normally there. I'm also going to add a modifier. So go to the modifiers panel and add a subdivision surface modifier. You should see this option for adaptive subdivision. Just click that and go to simple. If you don't see that, it means you didn't go to experimental under the feature set. Uh, I'm also going to go down to the material properties and open up the settings there. And where it says displacement, I'm going to change this to displacement only. The last step is just to plug this into the displacement on the material output. And uh, it's much too high. Go down to maybe 0.01 or something like that and see what that looks like. It's a little tough to see, so I'm going to bring in a principal BSDF, place it right here. And let's see what it looks like with that material. Still a little too high. You can either adjust it here, or you can adjust the gray and white values here. Like, for instance, if you went uh, to something a little bit less extreme here, more of a gray, you do the same thing up top here. And uh, uh, it's too much. Something like that looks a bit better. Um, yeah, so it's up to you how you want to adjust that. Why don't we go back to white and I'll adjust it down here to something like 0 0.003. Uh, that looks pretty good for now. We can change it later if we want. I'm also going to create a quick little bump map node here. And uh, so we can kind of compound this effect here. Let's go into the height and this will go into the normal right here. So now we can see these a little bit better. I'm going to use this metal here that I created in part 44, the iron metal here. So go ahead and follow this tutorial if you want this same pattern. Otherwise, don't worry about it. But uh, rather than recreate it exactly, um, I'm just going to go ahead and import it. I think one of the easiest ways to import this material is just to grab this uh, flattened cube from, you know, in this case, that metal file. And I'm going to hit Control C. And then you just open up your other blend file and hit Control V. Uh, over the 3D viewport, and it should be uh, pretty easy to get that material in there. You can even do the same object. Uh, it's just really fast, really quick way to do it. For this metal texture, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of this here. Uh, let's grab the principled BSDF as well, why not? And I'm going to hit Control C. Let's grab this material here and hit Control V. I'm just going to move this all up, and uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this guy here and bring in this one instead. And we can add these bump maps together just by feeding one into the normal of the other one. I'm going to add one more node up here, an ambient occlusion node. And let's come out of the AO settings. I'm going to go into a color ramp and uh, just drag the black up until we start to see some shadows there from those rivets. Um, there we go. If it's needing to update in your viewport, just go ahead and tab twice to get an updated version. You know, if you're zoomed out, it won't be very many details, but then if you zoom in, you want to be able to see those details, so just hit tab twice, and it should reset everything for you. Let's uh, plug this into a mix RGB, and we'll plug this color into the bottom socket, and we'll run that all into the base color right here. I'm going to go to this value node halfway through my setup and just change this to 2 
to make these shapes a little bit larger as well. You can even go a little bit further down, maybe like 1.5 or something like that. I think two is fine for now. I'm also going to change the interpolation on both of these color amps to ease instead of linear. So once you're happy with this here, you can do a number of settings, including uh, changing this color amp here to get more or less rust as well. Um, you know, including any of this stuff right here, you know, the metallicness, roughness, bump, etc. Or you could change the colors up here just to get uh, more rust as well. Um, but uh, once you're all satisfied with that, we could try putting it on a cube and see what happens there. So the problem is um, it works fine for the top and the bottom, but the sides aren't going to work very well because the way I've got this mapped out is using the separate X, Y, Z with uh, the X and the Y there. So uh, for that reason, I recommend changing this to the UV output rather than the object output. And then we can have the pattern going along all of these edges here, just based on how they're mapped out with the UV. I ended up turning the displacement back up a little bit to 0 0.005 for this guy here. I'm going to add one more thing just to change the shape, uh, the profile of these bumps here. And uh, I just made a reroute point by holding down shift and right clicking and dragging through that node noodle there. And I'm going to search for an RGB curves node. I'll just place it right here before the bump and the displacement node. And I'm just going to make one point and I'm going to drag it down so that it's about like maybe around here you know we've got like 0.65 and 0.32 something like that and what that's going to do is it's just going to change the shape of that gradient slightly and round them out just ever so slightly doesn't make that huge of a difference um here it is without that rgb curves and here it is with so uh, i guess it's up to you if you want to put this last part in but i just liked the look of it one more thing i'm going to change is just this mix rgb after the ambient occlusion and color ramp, I feel like the way I did it is kind of taking away too many of the original details of that metal I set up. So instead, uh, here's the original material right here. I'm just going to change this to multiply and have the factor at one. And I like to look at that a little bit better. Okay, that's all for today. Hope that was easy to follow and that you understood what I was doing, how to change stuff around as well. Uh, if you don't, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do to clear up any confusion. Thanks for watching.